Welcome to day number 19, and we are now finding ourselves in the book of Matthew. And for those of you who are journeying with us daily, we take Sunday off, but on Saturday, um, those of us that are watching these videos, we observe the Bible project, the, the prophets from the Older Testament, and that was a great teaching. And the reason why we did that is because now we're going to begin to deal with the Gospel of Matthew. Again. Again. Yeah but with the particular bent of looking at prophecies and how does Matthew view that and, and all of those kind of things. And so here we find ourselves in the Gospel of Matthew. And Peter, is there anything that you wanted to say about that before we kind of jump in and look at the glaring prophecy that's found right in Matthew 1? Yeah. Um, well, hopefully one of the things the Bible Project video was able to do was kind of reframe what we thought biblical prophecy was trying to do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and that can help us see more clearly what Matthew is trying to do with it. So sure. uh, in our day, age, and culture, if somebody prophesies about something, right. they give us factual information about something that's not going to happen yet. Yes. And usually because you, couldn't, you can't know what's going to happen. Right, what, right, Because right. you couldn't possibly know what's going to happen. Somehow, because a prophet could know what is going to happen. Yes we then um, sort of trust the truth of their message. Yes. But what biblical prophecy has hopefully shown is that sometimes talking about what is going to happen um, is a part of it, but it's more trying to give God's point of view on a situation. Sure. And sometimes that doesn't involve factual information at all. Sometimes Factual involves, meaning specific, right? Yeah, like this day, dates, that things, place. Places, or things that symbolize yeah. those yeah. dates, things, places. Um, but you know, the great, uh, they mentioned this in this um, Bible Project video. Right. Uh, two really weird moments in the prophets. One where, you know, Isaiah walks around naked for three years. Right. To talk about the desolation of Israel. Sure. One where uh, um, Ezekiel Lays on his side. Lays on his side and then lays on his other side. Right. One of the ones we're going to talk about this week is Hosea, mm -hmm. who is asked to marry a prostitute by yes. God. Yes, yes. Um, and so it's sometimes those performative things are trying to say things. We would even call it theater. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. Where there's theater where the yeah. prophet themselves are, they're exemplifying Israel in the midst of that. Yeah, they're performing their message. Correct. So In a God, very theatrical way. God yeah. telling Hosea to marry Gomer doesn't necessarily pr predict anything per se, mm -hmm. but it says, this is what's going on from my point of view, says God. Yeah. So the prophet personifies Israel yeah. in some ways, so, especially in Hosea. Right. So yeah. uh, if you were not to remember that, if you were to do, we're just talking about facts, names, dates, that's a prophet right, right, thing. Right. And you come to Matthew... One of the things that people have noted for uh, centuries is that mm -hmm. then Matthew is a pretty bad reader of the Old Testament. If you view it that way. Right. Yes. Because he'll say things that don't quite match up or he'll mm -hmm. use references that are mm -hmm. clearly not about whatever. Yes. So more recent biblical scholarship has asked the question like, well, maybe Matthew's doing something else. Right. And um, my guide in all of this. Yeah is a man that I don't know or anything, but his name is Richard Hayes. Correct. As you know. Yes. And he was, for a long time, the dean of Duke we Divinity School. We have to say where he was. It's Duke hard Divinity to, School. It's hard to say it. Forgive him. Yes. Uh, so he's a Methodist. Um, right. And is a New Testament scholar. So. And, and brilliant. Yeah. And very conservative in the sense of how he views scripture. Yeah. Which is amazing, right? Well, Hayes has a really strong sense that uh, scripture is designed to form us mm -hmm. in what he calls our imagination. Not in the sense that we make stuff up, right? Yeah. but in the sense yeah. that a lot of our interaction with the world mm -hmm. um, is not a matter of facts, figures, and numbers, mm -hmm. but is a, is a matter of much deeper mm -hmm. emotive, mm -hmm. imaginary stuff. And right. he wants to talk about how scripture can hit us there. Yes. And so he's got two books. Yep. One is Reading Backwards. Which we highly recommend. Yep. And the yep. other is Echoes of Scripture in the Gospels. Right. And those two books are feeding a lot of what we're doing here. And we've read them for a long time and enjoyed those two books, yeah. so especially credit, Reading Backwards. Right. Has so been, credit where credit is due. Yes, very much so. Even though Richard he's is. at Duke. 
Thank you, Richard. Even though he's at Duke, we, we, okay being big UVA. He didn't play basketball. No, but still. I mean, he's teaching somewhere where the mascot's a devil. I just can't imagine. Maybe we shouldn't. Our allegiance <laughs> aligns itself at UVA with the Cavaliers. Well, mine does. I don't think you care about sports at all, really. Yeah, that's not a UVA-specific thing, though. Honestly. Yeah, okay. right, exactly. Anyway, anyway, task at hand. Well, um, so as we say... So in a nutshell, when most people would look at the first prophecy we're going to look at, and they're going to say, hey, that's the exact kind I like. Right. You know, there will be a woman who right. is a virgin, has a child, and I want to see those all over the Gospel right. of Matthew, right. Right? right? But when you start looking for those, there's not many of those. There's well, the, and, something else yeah, that and this is one, being done. This one is also a little complicated, but right. some people might think to themselves, why are you only working with Matthew? Right. And the answer is that Matthew, again, is a, um, a notorious and repeated citer of prophecy. Correct. Um, especially in his uh, birth narratives. Right in a way that's not really true of the okay. other Gospels. So yeah. we're looking at Matthew because yeah. Matthew has prophecy to look at. Let, let me pitch it this way, too. Um, in one of the, in Richard Hayes' book, he mentions that there are 10 specific times in the Gospel of Matthew where the, Matthew literally writes, so that Scripture would be fulfilled. 10 times. Five of those happened before Jesus' baptism. So in his mind, he believes that Matthew, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wants you to kind of shift a gear in that direction. So it front loads. He also says that there are 61 direct references right. to the Older Testament. Word for word quotes. Word for word quotes yeah. in the, in, from the Older Testament, but there's countless innuendos. So you've got 10, so that scripture would be fulfilled, 61 direct quotes, and then countless. They're Phrases, still discovering. references. Right, and they're still discovering to this day. Bible scholars that love to read the text the way you and I do are still discovering ways in which Matthew borrows from the Older Testament. So yes. let's look at the first one. Okay, let's look at the first one. So yes. uh, we are in Matthew chapter 1. Yep verse 23, yes. which at least in my Bible is very aggressively set aside so my eyes... Well, let's start reading in verse 22. Sure. Okay. It uh, says, go ahead. I'll read do it. it. Yeah. Step back. No, uh, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Mm -hmm. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, yes. which means God with us. So I just wanted to draw attention to verse 22, where it says, all this took place to fulfill right. what the right. Lord had said. Right. That's one of the ten. Right. Okay. So, uh, well, we hear that, yep. and what we think is, ah, proof that Jesus is divine. It mm -hmm. prophesied a woman who yep. had never had sex will in fact have a baby. And that's found from Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to switch versions on here. Okay. Well, we have a problem here. Yes. What, Ro? Right. The Hebrew uh, for the Greek word for virgin here is parthenos, mm -hmm. which when... Uh, the Old Testament was translated into Greek mm -hmm. is a stand-in for the word Alma. But the problem is Alma just means young woman. Correct. Parthenos could mean young woman, but often means virgin. Right. And more annoyingly, in the Isaiah passage, mm -hmm. the sense is that this young woman who will conceive and bear a son mm -hmm. is Isaiah's wife. Yeah. So there's actually a sign that in Isaiah's life, mm -hmm. the birth of his son. Hill. Correct. So... One group of scholars might go like, see, Matthew doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. It's kind of bunk. Yeah. But um, the interesting thing, when you line up, as you know, right. Matthew's prophecies is that all the prophecies he's using, mm -hmm. they come back to that idea that actually ends it, im anu el, with us, God. Yes. And what we're going to see over the next couple of days is the way in which these prophecies are returning to this idea Yep. that God had promised to be with Israel. Yes. And so I think, um, as Richard Hayes says, it's a very thorny issue to ask the question about, right. well, is the Parthenos thing, is the virgin right. thing, even a super important part of it? Or like, what's clicking on here? Does sure. it have to be a young woman? But whatever happens, Matthew grabs that right. and literally right. quotes it in right. his gospel. And the cash out, mm -hmm. the, the tip of the spear does not seem to be the virgin piece. The virgin piece. It's the God is with the us The Emmanuel piece. piece. And when we line up, and this is what we're doing this week, the other direct quotes from the Old Testament. Right. 
in this chunk of Matthew's gospel, yes. what we keep seeing over and over and over yes. again is the fulfillment of the promise of the presence of God. Right. And that, that promise is fulfilled in Christ. Right, right. That's what becomes absolutely yeah. key. When Jesus shows up as in, in the incarnation of the God who created all things, suddenly we find all of that stuff is Emmanuel, God with us. Well, that's it for us in our time today. And so let's go ahead and pray and ask the Lord to be with us as well. Let's pray. Well, Jesus, thank you that you truly are the incarnate God, the Emmanuel with us. Thank you that it did not stop there. But when you ascended, you sent the Spirit to be with each and every one of us, not just with us, but through faith in you dwelling in us. So God, we pray that your Spirit would attend to us, that we would say as the ancients have, come Holy Spirit, Emmanuel. God, thank you for the text and how it works together in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at tomorrow's video.